Whenever Group C sports car racing is talked about, the image is that of insanity. Distilled down and blown up in hundreds of cylinders across dozens of cars as they fought for some of the greatest accolades in motorsport. And while Group C may not always have been quite so ridiculous, our subject today certainly was. So fast in fact, that the most famous motor racing track in the world was changed to ensure it could never happen again. This is the story of the Sauber Mercedes C9. Group C was created in 1982 as a replacement for Group 5 and Group 6. Broadly, this was to consolidate the very pinnacle of sports car racing under a single set of regulations, and it was a hit. Sauber, having raced in Group 6 before the change, was involved in Group C from the very beginning, with its first proper Group C car, the Sauber C6. The C6 wasn't the success that Sauber surely hoped it would be, but was able to achieve some middling results, with an overall best finish of 4th place at Hockenheim in 1982. It was clear that there was room for improvement, and Sauber wasted no time in developing a new car this time based around a 3.5-litre BMW inline 6 to replace the Cosworth motor that had been the heart of the C6. I'll let you have a guess at what the new car was called. Yeah. The C7 was unfortunately more of the same for Sauber. While they managed a respectable 9th place finish in the 1983 24 Hours of Le Mans, the BMW engine never seemed to be quite the right fit for the Swiss engineering firm. Sauber took a year out after selling the single C7 chassis to a private outfit halfway through the 1983 season, choosing to invest in the future and develop a car for 1985. At this time, Mercedes was looking for an in, but wasn't prepared to foot the huge bills associated with building a car from the ground up. Mercedes had an engine, and Sauber needed an engine and so they entered into a marriage of convenience to form the Sauber Mercedes C8. Despite the promise shown by Mercedes 5-litre twin-turbocharged V8 and Sauber's undeniable chassis-building abilities, the 1985 season proved fruitless for Sauber Mercedes. They qualified 17th at Le Mans, but failed to finish due to an accident and then failed to even start any of the following events. For 1986, the team found more sponsorship money and became Coros Racing. While neither C8 was able to finish at Le Mans, the 1000 km of Nürburgring became Sauber's first victory of the Group C era, a race in which drivers Henry Pescarolo and Mike Thackwell crossed the line in first place. Undoubtedly, this first taste of victory served as both motivation and inspiration for the monster that would follow. If you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. It'd really help out the video. Thanks. First introduced in 1987, the Coros Sauber Mercedes C9 was one of the most iconic cars to have ever graced Group C. While the exterior is markedly different to its predecessor, it shares a surprising amount with the old C8, including most of the chassis and drivetrain. That being said, the aluminium alloy monocoque was stiffened and the 5-litre V8 was given new triple K turbochargers, which boosted the car's power output to a monstrous 800 brake horsepower. 1987, however, was not the C9's year. The car wasn't able to perform as expected. The sky-high hopes after the C8's victory at the Nürburgring the previous year lay shattered, at least for team sponsor Coros, who chose not to renew their sponsorship of the team after the C9 only managed to score points in one of the five races it competed in in 1987. 1988 saw big changes for what was now once again called the Sauber Mercedes team. They found sponsorship in the form of AEG, an electronics company owned at the time by Daimler-Benz. To put it in simple terms, Mercedes now had the resources to fully commit to the C9 project. This showed, as 1988 marked a significant improvement over the previous year's effort, with the team managing second place in the championship overall, losing only to the mighty Jaguar XJR9. That being said, Le Mans had been less than plain sailing for the C9 in 1988, with the cars having to be retired due to concerns over the safety of their tires following a blowout. 1989 
was the year. There was clearly potential in the C9, the question was how to use it. It was decided that the C9's 800 horsepower wasn't enough, and so the engine was upgraded. The C9's 5 litre V8 now had aluminium heads and an increased boost tolerance for an estimated power output of 820 horsepower, a mammoth amount of power for a car that only weighed 905 kilograms. It shouldn't be surprising, therefore, that the car was fast. Really, really fast. The C9 won all but one race in 1989, including Le Mans, where one of the three C9s was able to set the second fastest speed ever recorded at the track during a qualifying session, a scary 248 miles per hour. The C9 was second only to the Peugeot P88 that had hit 251 miles per hour the previous year. This was deemed to be too fast, and officials feared for the future of safety at Le Mans, if nothing was done to curb the speeds, which led to the creation of the two famous chicanes on the Mulsanne Strait, built after the 1989 season and first put to use in 1990. These roadblocks ensured that the Le Mans speed record would never be broken. Sauber had finally done it, after nearly a decade of trying and failing to crack the greatest endurance event in the world, they finally beat Le Mans. Mercedes would keep trying until 1991, when they ultimately withdrew, not returning to Le Mans until the rise of GT1. You can watch my video about how that went here. Thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.